Okay, welcome to another painting video um, and reviewing the layers in this one. So I'm going to look at the, uh, I've got the GW How to Paint Miniatures book in here and we're looking at this sort of line here. We're going to do a orc flesh trial. So in my previous videos I tried out the base and wash, or sorry, base and shade on here. Now I'm going to try uh, using the layers. So the next layer they suggest is War Boss Green, which is kind of like a goblin green. And then they're going to go with a uh, scar sink green, which is kind of like a goblin green and bleach bone, which is basically the way they would have recommended you to do this in the past. So um, I'm just going to see how this works with the way that I'm used to painting. So what I usually do is I um, I kind of meter the paint using uh, like licking the brush a little bit. I don't recommend doing that because I don't know what kind of toxins are in these things, but uh, um, that's what I do. So I don't really like how these the pots still don't stay open on their own. So that's uh, so I'm using the back of my thumb to kind of hold some paint. But uh, so I'm just trying to see how this paints on here. So the idea with layering is that you're getting uh, kind of all the raised bits, leaving a little bit of a gap where you can still see the base coat and uh, wash. So you're you're just trying to build it up. So how is this working out? Um, I think it's working just fine. Basically, I don't really need to thin this down. I'm kind of painting it on almost uh, straight out of the pot. Um, is that because it's too thin? I don't think so. I, is it too transparent? It doesn't seem to be. It seems to be going on basically the way it should. Um, so we're just trying to get some of that detail there on the flesh. And uh, then what I'll do is I'll do the next layer on top of that. So some of the blending I can do just by thinning the paint out just by kind of uh, putting it in my mouth. But again, not recommending that. Just that's what I do. It's a habit that I started a long, long time ago. Um, and uh, seems to do okay. Hasn't killed me yet. Hopefully it doesn't. But uh, your mileage may vary. So, okay, so I painted that on there. I've got my um, basic highlight on. So that's one layer, and then I'm going to do just the edges with this one here. So, um, again, just to, to bring out the, the sharper points. So I'm going to do the eyebrows here, do the lower bits by his mouth. Any of the really sort of sharp things, maybe his cheekbones. So, uh, yeah, it seems to be painting on the way I would expect. I don't see any issue with how thin it is or not thin it is. Um, I tend to like my orc skin to be a bit uh, more vivid. Okay, so now they also suggest using the, uh, the glaze at the end. They have a, a I'm not going to use the dry on this one. So I'm going to try the uh, Way Watcher green which is just the the glaze and I'll see if that what that does to my colors here so as you can see it's uh, quite a bright so my brush is pretty clean and I'm just gonna put that on almost like a wash but I don't want it pooling I, I think that's how you're supposed to use this so I don't know that I'm seeing any big difference with that So there's the uh, orc flesh using the uh, iconic color scheme guide that GW has. So I'm going to pause right now and I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the red. Uh, the red here I've got Mephiston red and Kaborg crimson, whatever, so that's the bow red replacement. And I'm going to try using the, the colors they recommend for that. Okay, so we're, uh, we're back. There's the, the face I just did and the other part. Now I'm going to do this part here. So that's got um, Mephiston Red and Kaborg Crimson. And uh, now the, the paint book says to do Wild Rider Red next and then Wazdaka. But those, uh, I don't know about you, but that looks like it's the other way around. So this darker one should go first. 
So I'm going to do it like that, just because that's what it seems to be. So this is your uh, replacement, I guess, for your blood red. So I'm going to paint that over most of the uh, exposed areas here. And uh, again, basically coming straight out of the pot, just using my thumb there to, to get the right amount of paint on the brush. And uh, I think some people have mentioned that they don't like the idea of this paint by number sort of thing, you know. These are your pre-mixed highlights. Um, I, I'm going to have to disagree. I'm used to using Reaper paints, and Reapers come in triads where you have a shade, a uh, mid-tone, and then a highlight. And the way that I've been using those is um, typically I was using a GW foundation, a GW wash, and then uh, painting the three sort of layers on top of that. And uh, I found that to be very effective, very uh, fast way to, to paint, and very consistent. So my guys always looked the same because I wasn't mixing up colors, uh, like mixing colors, I mean, you know, custom ones. And so it was uh, rather easy. So there I've painted the, um, the layer of Wazdaka Red, sort of uh, leaving a bit of a gap around the outside so you get your fade from your shade through your base. Um, and of course I haven't done the front of this guy's legs, but just doing this back part. And now I'm going to move over to the Wild Rider Red, which is much more like an orange. It's almost like the Blaze Orange. So I wonder if that's um, just a misprint in the in the book here. So the idea with the the, the brighter one is I'm just going to be painting that on the uh, the sharper edges. So just getting the uh, the raised bits here, just to accentuate some of the um, the details. And uh, yeah, it seems to be no issue there with how it's behaving. Um, like I said, I I licked the paints so I can always get the exact consistency I want as long as it's not too thin to begin with. I can always thin it down on the, on the fly. And uh, I think the um, pre uh, pre-established highlights and shades works for the style of painting that I do and the, the kind of tutorials I do. So if that um, if that works for you as well, great. Check out my my, my uh, channel, and uh, maybe suggest some videos that you'd like to see. Um, so yeah, there's pretty quick. So none of this messing about with uh, mixing colors and not sure which ones are which. So I I like the idea of having these already um, established for you. Yeah, it means more buying buying more paint, so you're investing more money. Um, so that may or may not be something you choose to do, but uh, that's the nature of the hobby. They're always going to try to get an extra buck out of you. So now I'm going to use the uh, Blood Letter Red Clays and give that a, um, a layer there. I think we're dry enough. So I'm just going to paint this on kind of thin. Uh, there we go. So that's that brightens up the red nicely. Um, again, I don't know uh, exactly how this will look on your screen or device or whatever you're watching this on, but once I put that on, um, that really richened up the reds. And I I like my reds bright and uh, almost cartoony, so that that works for me. Um, the other reds, so these uh, these here are almost a little bit. Um, muted tones, uh, whereas the old GW Blood Red was a very, very vibrant red um, and one of my favorite colors in the range. So with the uh, with the use of this Blood Letter Glaze, you kind of can get that vibrance and uh, I think I, I like that. Um, is it the same? No, it's not quite the same as the old way of doing the reds, but uh, still quite good. And that's your general idea of how the layers work. So you have your base coat, you shade it with the wash, or well, it's called the shade now, and uh, then you can paint those two layers on. And the consistency seems about right to me. Um, it seems similar to the old uh, paints. I don't have any issues with that personally. So, uh, and these glazes, I think that's a nice addition. 
Um, was it necessary before? Not really, but uh, it, uh, it gives you one more option for, for tinting things and getting the, the look that you want. So that's uh, all I'm going to do in this video for layers. Um, again, the, the key with this is going to be finding out which combinations you want to use and, and trying to get the paint. So if buying more paints is, a, is a, something that's an option for you, then great, you can go ahead with this. If it's not, well, this doesn't really work well. Um, the Reaper paints, they, they've always done that and I really, really enjoyed that and that's one of the reasons why I was excited about this new range. But uh, I can understand that you know, paying three or four dollars or whatever it is in your area for these bottles can be quite expensive. So that's a choice you'll have to make, but I, as far as how they work, I, I like them and I'm going to keep doing tutorials like this. See you in the next video.